All right, now that we have the base of the filter done, we're going to implement it into our software. So let's just go back to our software again and see what was happening here. Our sample frequency, remember, was uh, 200 hertz. So that was 1 over 200 will give me the 5 milliseconds there. And then we kind of generate a signal. And I told you this is normally, we generate it now, but this is from your analog pin. So this would normally from be from your analog pin. So let's just copy this to this new part here. So at the moment, I'm just going to generate a signal here. This one, we have to slow down to our sample frequency, our FS. Remember, we designed that pole zero placement for the 200 Hz frequency. So the circle went from zero to 200. So this is why we have to make this 200 Hz, the sample frequency. And what happens now? Our Xn is our value. So we're simulating signal here, but this would have come from our analog pin. Create local variable. So I'm making my own signal as if it would come from the output. I'm deleting just the XN there. This is now my numeric, my analog input that would have come from the output, uh, from the machine itself. Remember, what do we have there? We've got the 2 hertz signal and the 50 hertz noise. So this should filter it out now. But at the moment, it won't filter it out. Because what's happening here? It's all zeros. Now remember, we did a few mathematical equations. This one, and we got to this formula at the end. Remember, we got to this one, yeah? Just paste this in the lab file. Okay, So these are now the values. So let's see. B0. Can you see B0 is 1? So we make B0 1. That value there, can you see it's B, uh, B1? So B1 is 0. That's 0. B2 is 0. That's 0. There is no A1, but can you, uh, A0, but you can see A1 is the one there which is minus 1.412 and this is minus a1 so the value there is going to be 1.412 a2 0.5 can you see a2 is 0.5 so this is going to be minus 0 0.5 because this is minus a2 so let's quickly see how it looks like let's put a needle here uh, let me just split screen this left right so our input, we'll put a, as previous, we'll just put a, a meter there, just to show how it's working. Let's call this x of n. Then we'll put the one at the output as well, just to kind of see what's happening. So that's our input signal. We'll have another one. Copy, paste, oh sorry, wrong one. Okay, let's just place its so own numeric meter output. We'll call this one y of n. Or the output signal. This should be the filtered one that's going to go to your control circuit or indicator, whatever you need it for it not to jump around with. We just put it inside the y loop. So let's see how it looks like. Can you see this one is jumping around a lot? Let me just, sorry, it goes from 0 to 14. Eh? Remember, it goes from 0 to 14. This one goes from 0 to 14. So that one jumps around a lot. This one is now much smoother. Let's just put a graph thing just to see what is happening with it. Let me just, before I put the graph thing, um, this value is not calibrate at the moment we can see we can go there to 400 so let's just make this 500 i'm going to talk about it now there we go this is the noisy one that's the smoother one noisy one the smoother one um so it is filtering now it's not calibrated at the moment um the reason for that is that this filter amplifies so it amplifies the signals the frequencies that you want and the ones that you don't want to just keep, it doesn't amplify at all. So we still have to calibrate it. And 
normally in the formula there, there's a big K in front here for the calibration coefficient. So you're going to multiply with 0.1 or 0.5, but you're going to calibrate it. You're going to put something on here in the beginning that's supposed to be 40, and then you're going to see what it is, and you're going to calibrate it. Before we do that, before we do calibration, at the moment, this input goes from 0 to 40 anyway, but the analog input won't go to 0 to 40. Remember, that sensor will give a different voltage for the inputs. And then the next video, I'm going to talk about quantization error and quantization to tell you what the input is going to be. But first, let's see how can we make this one a little bit better. I'm just going to slow the input down so that we can just see it. Remember, it was 2 hertz. If I just make it much lower, 0, 0,2, filter is not really designed for it, but it is filtering out the 50. So we can see that big shake is now a little shakier so it's definitely filtering it down a nice way to also see this is through a waveform and remember in the previous one i'm just changing it back this structure we have here as we get an input there's an output so it's linear time invariant so there's only one point at a time it's like a multimeter so if you want to see a lot of values like on a waveform Remember what we did in the previous one? We made a for loop. So we're actually slowing the process down now. That's why I'm putting it in a separate thread. We're slowing the process down. But if you want to see what's going on, this is a, a good, good way to do it. Um, again, like the previous one, we put a for loop. We're going to log data. We're going to log a thousand points. Create constant. One, zero, oh, two, four. We're going to look at the input so create local variable this is kind of unnecessary in a control circuit we we'll, won't do this in a control circuit it's just to see what is going on in my graphs another one there so i'm going to sample a thousand of the outputs create local variable change to read Create control and I have to also sample this at the sample rate. So theoretically now we've written, because we do multi-threading, uh, multi this is separate processes. If this one was an FPGA, they would have been completely separate. So this one I generate a signal just to simulate what I'm supposed to get in. This one is a solid filter. Uh, Time invariant, every every five milliseconds it will give me an output as it reads the input. So it's one sample at a time, which is perfectly linear. Well, not linear, but time linear. And then this one is like a little logbook, a little notebook. Somebody stays for every five milliseconds just plotting down a thousand values so that you can see it. So it's going to take five seconds for that five values to come in there. And there we can see there's our noisy signal and there's our pretty signal, you know, the one that is filtered. I'm just going to make less here. We don't need so much. 200 would be fine. 256 then. There we can see noisy signal, filtered signal. Obviously our noise is quite large here. Uh, we made the amplitude of the noise 20 and that would normally not be that big, our signal to noise. Uh, here we can see our actual amplitude the noise was as big as our signal so that was a very large noise uh, let's just make a smaller noise signal there we can see the filter without the filter with the filter i think this works very nicely so the next step we're going to calibrate it it's not calibrated at the moment this one goes from 0 to 40 and then this one goes from 0 to 450 so we must just multiply the output so that 40 is 40 this side as well and that's quite simple and uh, normally you'll do as i say calibration input anyway you'll have a calibration variable but on the output just before you put it on the output you'll just put a multiply in there and then multiply it with 10 percent or 5 percent or whatever your calibration index needs to be and um, what I sometimes do is I'll calculate the max value here and the max value there and I'll just get the coefficient so like a mx plus c type of thing but for now I think this works very nicely the next video I'm going to show you 
quantify, uh, quantization, how to physically calculate your errors on the inputs.